We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet, and today is our stop in Glendale, Arizona, where we get to visit with Coach Jeff Bowen from the Arizona Christian Firestorm, who's been with the program since the beginning, eighth season as you were heading into as the head coach. And Coach, let's let's start it last year just for a moment, bring us up to speed to where we are right now. When we last saw the firestorm, it was on a very cold, a very windy day in Sioux City, Iowa. I have to tell you, Coach, I was watching that from the comfort of my home on the internet. I know that you were experiencing it up close and personally, uh, taking on the number one team in the country in the playoffs. It was an 8-3 and three season, and you all, and I know there are really no moral victories, but... Uh, you rally in that game, and uh, they, they got out big. You rally, you come back. Quite a contest. That's the last time we saw the firestorm. Uh, tell us a little bit about last season and, and uh, what that, that playoff appearance was about. Well, last season was, was really unique. I mean, we started out one and two, uh, you know, last place in our, our league. And, uh, you know, our guys just regrouped. Our, our staff regrouped. And, uh you know, we didn't talk about it much, but we lost nine guys, nine guys in camp. <laughs> so we were trying to rebuild our stuff coming out of camp just to get ready for the start of the season. And, um, you know, we, we didn't start out well, but then we ran seven in a row and we, we ended up tying for the conference title. And, and uh, you know, you know how the NAI is. Don't lose late. And if you can get on a win streak late, you know, you got a chance to get in. And we are, we got the bid for our conference uh, with all the tiebreakers, and uh, you know, so it was really a, really a testament to our young men and and, and sticking with it. And and uh, we had some huge wins along the way. We beat um, OUAZ number number seven in the country. We beat them, and then we had some big games on the road. You know, when we played at. Uh, at Sagu, that was a that was a tough game, and then beating Langston at home. Um, so the guys did a great job, and then we we drew Morningside. And and you're right, there are no moral victories, but it was another step for our program. We we showed that we can play with the uh, elite programs in the NAI. Um, you know, it was exciting to 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 be on the field with Morningside, and uh, you know, the weather didn't affect us as much as I thought it was going to. It was more the wind and. The wind affected both teams. So um, it wasn't a moral victory, but it was a nice jumping off point for uh, for our seniors to to go out, you know, playing well and winning the conference title. And for our returners, uh, you know, it's, a, it's another step in our program uh, to get to the to get to the championship level. Eight and three in 2022. And as you mentioned, coach, a share of the Sooner Athletic Conference championship. But it's not going to be that case Next year, we know for sure because of the transition you all have made. Now, I know in the state of Arizona, there is talk about conference realignment, but a lot of folks are talking Arizona, Arizona State. You've experienced it personally, and the Firestorm will be a part of the Frontier Conference heading into 2023. Talk about the uh, the realignment and the move. Well, we're, we're real excited about it. You know, um, I think um, with – it seems like the, the Sooner Athletic Conference was looking more expansion to the east, um, you know, and it was it's just us in Ottawa in the west, and, and there was a lot of a lot of things that go into that, you know, logistically, travel, financially, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, we actually started looking at the frontier a couple of years ago um, as a, if because of things didn't change that it could be a possibility for us, and the frontier welcomed us with open arms. It was, uh, is, um, it's a great conference, a lot of history, you know, um, teams that have won national championships, uh, high quality teams playing really good football. Um, and it gives us a, a more of a Northwest approach, you know, with the schools in Oregon, uh, possibly bringing in another West coast team next year. Um, so it just fit us as an institution and in a football program, it fit us for, for where we want to go in our football program and in our athletics. Coach, I want to touch on that Frontier Conference schedule a little bit later. Let's talk about the team that you bring back. And uh, I think you have to lead with one of the best players to ever wear a Firestorm uniform in Tyler Duncan comes back, a great dual threat quarterback, and he'll be joined in the backfield by Maurice Rocket, uh, another great all-purpose gainer. Uh, take us through this offense. 
Um, yeah, Tyler's the straw that stirs the drink. I mean, he's he's something special. And, and he, you know, initially he wasn't coming back. We were at Texas College, and we had some recruits out at the game, and one of them was a quarterback uh, that a uh, highly rated kid that ended up going to Air Force Academy. But uh, we were recruiting him, and he was at the game, and I asked Tyler to talk him up a little bit, and, and Tyler did. And he was great. And then Tyler came over. He goes, I think we got a shot at him, Coach, but – um, you may just keep me for another year. And it kind of caught me off guard because we had, we had talked about him not. And he had just talked it over with his family, and it really fit to, for him to play his um, his last year of, of college football. And we're excited to get him back. And, uh, you know, he's going to do a great job for us leading our offense. I mean, if you're going to go into a new league, it, it's it's great to have, have that. Rocket just kind of came uh, – you know, he was our utility knife for us last year. He played in the backfield, playing in the slot, throwing the ball, run, just did a lot of different things with him. And, uh, you know, he had a nice year. And then uh, uh, he had a, a big game for us against Morningside, uh, catching the ball, actually. Um, and we think he's uh, he's he, he can be an outstanding back in, in the league. And, and, and we've gone out and recruited some really good running backs for that room also that we're excited about. But – you know, I mean, he's the, the lead returner. It's his job to lose, and we're excited about him. Um, you know, uh, off what we're really excited about is the offensive line um, and the guys coming back there with uh, Kalen Merriman. He's coming back for a COVID year at our center spot. Um, an uh, an all league all kid in um, in Will Chambers. Um, Spencer Cox got, he's one of those guys that got hurt throughout the season last year. He's back healthy, uh, at one of our tackle spots. Now him getting hurt meant that, uh, another young man came in and, um, Matt, uh, Matt Jordan played at the right guard, uh, right tackle spot. So now we got those guys back. And then, uh, Mason Cullop who started at, at the guard, other guard spot for us. So we only lost one of our starters on the offensive line. Uh, we've signed uh, some some transfers, and we have some uh, t- freshmen coming in that we think can really shore up the offensive line. So we're excited about that. Um, and then we, we start getting some guys back in the receiver core spot from injuries, and some young guys that had to step up and play last year. You know, um, uh, um, Clayton Dowdy will be a, a, a quality tight end type guy for us, and we've brought in some guys there. Uh, so there's just a there's a boatload of guys coming back. Dion Gilbert's coming back off of an injury he, he started for us actually as a freshman and then missed um, all of last year with a, a foot injury. So he's coming back. He uh, actually was able to get out and run track this spring and and get some of his stuff uh, you know rolling again with the, the speed aspect and, and all that kind of stuff. So we're excited about him. Um, and then. Um, Damian Jordan, a freshman that got thrown into the mix last year because of all the injuries, and we think he could be pretty special too. So we got a good mix of guys coming back, and we signed some mid-year guys um, that we think can come in and play. Uh, uh, Chase Tompkins, uh, we, we picked him up um, from uh, from Dort, and uh, he, play, he started a, a lot of games for him last year as a freshman. He came in mid-year and he's finding his way with us now. So we think offensively we're going to be uh, be able to do what we like to do. My goodness, Coach, the, the depth that you're talking about from the players coming back from injury and then those who got experience last year maybe a little unexpectedly because of those injuries, uh, it sounds like that, that you're stacking the deck very well. We're speaking now with Coach Jeff Bowen from Arizona Christian uh, here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, you take us through the offense. Take us through the defense now. I think that uh, it has to be led by Moses Smith there on the defensive line for you. And last season, 68 tackles, one of the leaders in that category, but seemed to make himself at home in opponents' backfields. 19 and a half tackles for loss, 11 sacks. He forced four fumbles and recovered three of those, and and those are just the stats that have numbers by them. He was a presence as well. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, he, Moses is phenomenal, and uh, yeah, I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to know why the coaches didn't vote him as a first team all league kid. I mean, he he was a honorable mention guy last year, and he he was tops in the nation or top five in the nation in a lot of categories. He's explosive. There's no one in the league that can single him. I can tell you that right now. We're so excited about him. Um, 
He's cut from the same mold as our last uh, first-team All-American defensive lineman, uh, Jerron Green, from a couple years ago. And Moses is actually a little more explosive. And I tell you what, since the end of the season till now, um, the kid's put on about 20 pounds and gotten faster. Um, I'm excited about uh, where he's going to uh, go this year. And we're going to do a lot of different things with him. So um, he's going to he's going to be the key. He's going to be the anchor to our defense. And great leader. So that's an amazing young man. Uh, obviously, we're a Christian institution. Um, and he... Um, you know, we have a ceremony that we do at the end of spring spring football. He actually got baptized on the 50-yard line after the spring game. So he's a, he's a special young man. He's, he's really solid. That is so great, Coach. And, and I love to hear those things, too. That That is fantastic. Uh, well, I know that he's leading the way then, a, a, a strong defense, and and uh, that sounds almost scary if he's put on weight and gotten faster, right? That's uh, <laughs> that's going to be something. He'll get the opponent's attention. Uh, special teams, by the way, uh, speaking of getting people's attention, the face of the special teams, I believe, for the Firestorm for the last couple of years has been Nestor Higuera, and he's coming back again. Yeah, Nestor is coming back. He's actually going to be a, a, a grad student, finished his degree, and that's a cool story in itself, um, you know, from, um, from with his uh, with his background and stuff, and and just being able to, to finish the degree was was special for him and his family, um, and then for him to come back for another year, um, you know, in, in hopes of being able to play football at the next level. Um, he's actually uh, he's just finishing up his dual citizenship um, with uh, he's he's. Was born in America, but he's getting his uh, from Mexico. He's getting his dual citizenship, so he can, he'll be able to transition into being an uh, international, and that's that's big in the Canadian leagues and stuff like that. So it's given him an opportunity to work on his master's degree, and it's also given him an opportunity to hopefully play at the next level. I mean, he's a two-time All-American for us. He's made some big kicks, and uh, you know, he became kind of a cult fixture there for a little bit, you know, um, and that's kind of continued. And uh, he's a special young man. We love Nestor. Well, Coach, the season gets underway relatively quickly, less than three months from now. I know it it, uh, I know it may seem like a long time if we're watching this, but uh, for you, you have a lot of things going on. It'll come by quickly. A couple of non-conference games, and, and you begin the season. Uh, you talked about a team in your own backyard there. You get to keep the rivalry game this year with uh, Ottawa, travel to Ottawa to take on uh, take on the spirit there. And then uh, at home, a Division II program, Fort Lewis College comes down, kind of a home and away there that you all had with them. And then the Frontier Conference schedule gets underway. You all have a home game to get league play started, taking on Montana State Northern as the lights come to town. So, Coach, that leads to the, the, the schedule, at least the opening part. Well, you know, it's um, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know the with the frontier. I mean, we've studied their film and and all like that, but we've we've never. It, we're basically playing eight new teams this year, so we're prepping for eight new teams. It's like we're a new program. Uh, feels like the early years where we're we're working, <laughs> traveling for uh, for all new places, and we're we're breaking down film for eight new opponents and. And trying to get ready for that, it's exciting. I'm excited about the uh, the Frontier Conference. You know, they come down and recruit Arizona heavily, and we, I've seen the coaches down here in the Valley. And you know, um, Coach uh, Struts puts on a, a camp down here for Rocky Mountain, and we went and worked as camps and stuff. So um, it, it's it's going to be interesting. You know, we come out of the gate with Ottawa. Obviously, they're the the in town rival, and we've been fortunate enough to. To, to beat them two out of the last three years and win, win conference titles and play in the tournament, but it's always a rivalry game. And it's tough because it's zero week, and I'm not a real fan of playing zero week games, but that's kind of the way the schedule fell. And, um, you know, Fort Lewis, is, uh, we handled them pretty well up there last year, but it was the first year uh, head coach, you know, he just got in, didn't have a full off season to work with them and recruit and all that kind of stuff. So he's had a full cycle now and, and uh, and I I know they're going to be uh, ready when they come down in the valley, you know. And then then we start the the, the frontier play, you know, with uh, the lights coming to town, like you said. Um, and we've played them in the past. We played them in 2019, and they actually beat us, um, you know, that year. So um, 
we'll hope we'll be ready for them. And then we then we get on the, the first game on the road right out of the shoot on the road for the conference is we head up to Carroll and and their conference champs and their 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 his their rich football history. Um, you know, it's quite a challenge. We're uh, we're uh, we're we're excited about the, the challenge. It's going to be uh, interesting and uh, a lot of new adventures for us this year. Well, Coach, it should be fun to watch, and we look forward to doing that here. We're going to follow you all, follow the firestorm in 2023, as uh, we're very thankful for your time today, Coach. Glad to hear about Moses. What a great story there, and uh, just uh, the team as a whole heading in the right direction as you head into new adventure uh, with uh, a lot of new teams and and just rewriting the books now and getting things prepared for the upcoming seasons. Coach Jeff Bowen, thank you so much for taking time with us here today as we preview the 2023 season and, again, success to the Firestorm. Well, I appreciate you having me on, and, um, you know, we're excited. I know you being in the Midwest, you you cover a lot of the those areas, and I appreciate you v- venturing out a little farther into the West, and uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you down the road, and we look forward to our uh, our new adventure in the Frontier Conference.